ask someone for a million dollars? Most people I know have trouble asking another person to help them with simple tasks. Welcome to the Doctor's Mentor Show. If you believe that medicine is an industry and not a profession, if you enjoy submitting complex reimbursement claims, or you would do another residency just for fun, be advised, you're about to be offended. You should probably leave now. All this talk about mentoring doctors is ridiculous. I thought doctors learned to do everything better than everyone else the first year of medical school. At least that's the way they act. If you love assisting patients with vitality breakthroughs, if the right to practice medicine without interference is important and you want expert tips for practice freedom and profits to support your epic life welcome aboard and prepare to be blown away the doctor's mentor show starts now here's your host dr Lori barr Imagine what it would be like if every word you wrote or spoke turned into gold. How would your life change if you knew that no matter what you created, it would bring you at least fourfold returns? Who would you choose to help and what causes would you support if no matter what you asked for, it appeared as if by magic? Now, you may be thinking this is only the stuff of fairy tales and myths like Aladdin's genie or King Midas. You remember him, right? The Midas touch? That doesn't happen in real world, you might have been told. That's just a fairy tale. Making money appear takes hard work, you might have learned growing up, and your current results may support that belief. Raise your hand if you've ever worked on an assignment, failed to delegate tasks to others, and run out of time so that you missed an opportunity. Nod your head if you've ever overcommitted yourself and have forgotten to make your life fun and easy. Say yes if you've ever felt like you're already giving your all to your job, and yet your boss has the audacity to ask you for more. Why is it that humans hesitate to ask for help? By the end of today's show, you'll understand what holds most people back from asking for what they really want, and you'll have the tools to equip yourself to ask someone to write your million-dollar ticket. Today's podcast comes under the category of love. Love. Yes, you heard it right. Your capacity to give and receive is directly proportional to the amount you are willing to love yourself. Yet, there's a powerful truth hidden deep in your memories that can transform you into the Superman, Wonder Woman, or other superhero you secretly wish to be. Make sure you stay tuned until the end so that you recognize that truth. You might be wondering, Lori, What does this have to do with my career path or my healing practice? You know, if you stop and take a deep breath in and breathe it out, and tune into yourself, you'll know in your heart that it has everything to do with both your practice and your career path. And the reason you can't believe it yet is because of one simple fact. The reason you can't believe it yet is that I haven't been specific enough. I have not yet communicated the facts in a way that you can clearly see, feel, hear, touch, smell, or taste them through the lens of your own perception. And because of that, you may have a hard time listening. Let me say that one more time. You aren't asking me to tell you more because I haven't been specific enough yet for you to trust what I'm saying. So let's get really specific about asking for a million dollars. As we begin to get more specific, you're going to realize that it's easier and easier to pay attention to what I'm saying. Have you ever been sent to find something that you didn't know what it was exactly? Maybe on a scavenger hunt or maybe during a a situation as a student, an, uh, an experiment in a lab or something. I remember one time, I was asked to get something and, and someone else needed it and I didn't know where it was kept and I didn't know what it looked like. Maybe you've felt that too. I was in med school and I was rotating through internal medicine. I was a third year medical student and my attending was the head of the department and he was very serious about the specialty of internal medicine. I mean, very serious. It was hard to get a smile out of this guy, but he really loved big words. On the other hand, my chief resident was an extremely clever and witty guy, just like the fat man in Samuel Shim's book, The House of God. 
Now, if you're in medicine and you haven't read The House of God, it is a classic. You, it, it's, it's really worth your time. So when, when my chief resident told me that he was going to snog a patient, uh, and it was my patient, so we were going to snog a patient so that we could get a tracheal aspirate to check for TB, I quickly went to my procedure manual, and I couldn't find snog as one of the procedures. So I didn't really know what we were going to do. And I also had no clue what kind of a catheter I should be looking for for us to perform the test. So, you know, the chief resident sent me to get the supplies. And when I came back without what we needed, he came back with me to the supply room and he helped me find just the right catheter and tube so that we could acquire and protect the specimen so that it could be sent to the lab for testing. Now, what we do to the patient had nothing to do with the definition of the word snog. Snog, and you probably know this, uh, especially if you've seen anything in the Harry Potter series or read any of the Harry Potter books or listened to them. I love listening to them. Uh, snogging means to kiss someone passionately and deeply. And so the chief resident even used this term to describe the procedure to the patient when obtaining the consent. He did it lightheartedly and in fun. And he described it in terms that the patient could understand because, you know, every single adult has been kissed at some time or another. So what we did was deep suction with a small bore catheter to collect a mucus sample from the airway, a tracheal aspirate. Now, the patient laughed along with us after the procedure since he'd never been kissed like that before. But what was really interesting was what happened the next morning on rounds. You know, I was presenting my patient, and here we are in a little circle, and the attending physician, the head of the internal medicine department, was standing up straight and very serious. And I told him, we snogged the patient, and everybody in the circle just cracked up except for the attending. We had a good laugh. And, you know, that was the day I learned a really important lesson. It's fun and easy to practice medicine by caring more about patients than protocol. Just to be clear, by protocol, I mean expected formalities dictated by the hierarchy of one's field of specialization. I am not talking about care protocols, care management protocols that are ex- that actually are proven to work, evidence-based care protocols that should be followed. I'm talking about talking in formal terms because that's what everybody in your field does, okay? And, and really, that's part of taking yourself too seriously as a doctor, and sometimes in other fields, we fall into that too. That's really a subject for another time, taking oneself too seriously. And that is exactly what that curmudgeon of an attending was doing. So don't worry if you've fallen into that trap. You're not alone. We'll address that in another show. But let's get back to the original question. How easy is it to find something if you're not sure what it looks like, sounds like, smells like, tastes like, or feels like? Or if you don't even know what the word means, it's really hard. But isn't it funny that most humans make their own lives super hard by not taking time to clearly define the outcomes they seek? So now let's get back to that million dollars. If you had to find a million dollars today, does your mind have a clear picture of a million dollars? I mean, can you go to the bank and ask for a million dollar bill? Do you know if that's possible or not? How real is a million dollars to you? How much money have you ever touched at one time? It's hard to ask yourself to ask someone for a million dollars if it's not real to you. So the question then becomes, how do you make it real? You define it in as many ways as possible. So here's one way to do it, one idea. Go to the bank and ask your banker to let you handle all the money in your account for a brief period of time. They usually have some kind of a room or back by the safe deposit boxes where you can do this. Take your take your smartphone and get a selfie of yourself with all that money. It helps to remind yourself later. Just sit there and experience the cash with each of your five senses. I want you to smell it. I want you to rub it on your cheeks. Everything. Crinkle it. Get all your senses involved with that money. Now, you may be saying to yourself, I don't even have a banker. I do all my things electronically. Well, there's something to be said for building relationships with people who deal with money every day. Or perhaps you're saying, I only have $200 in my account right now. That's really not the same thing. Wow, you know, you're right. So now is the time to ask two very important questions that will serve you the rest of your life. Number one, if I currently cannot experience this in this way, what else is possible? How else can I define a million dollars that I can do right now? And number two, If I cannot currently experience this on my own, 
who else can help me experience this? This little exercise of embracing stacks of money is a critical piece that I share when I consult with professionals about their practice profits, when I lead mastermind groups, and when I mentor any person who has not achieved the financial success they desire. See, most of us were raised in families where there was some negative connotation to making money. And what many people don't realize is that hearing ideas over and over again when you were young can have lifelong consequences when they're unintentionally embedded in the child's open mind. Thoughts like Booker T. Washington's words, nothing ever comes to one that is worth having except as the result of hard work. Or how about the love of money is the root of all evil? This statement, while completely true, is often misquoted as money is the root of all evil, a statement that is entirely false and can have devastating consequences on an impressionable mind. The worst possible consequence is when a person who embraces these ideas fails to see their own potential, their true value. These folks tend to undervalue their time and services. They lack the vision, clarity of self-communication, and the confidence to value their self-worth accurately, and they are totally uncomfortable asking someone else to pay them for what they truly are worth. If this is you, make sure you reach out to me at lori at thedoctorsmentor.com. I really love helping a guy or gal take simple steps, like anchoring the smell of even $100,000 into memory so he or she actually feels confident enough to ask someone for that million-dollar ticket. So just to recap so far, we've covered two important reasons why people fail to ask for and receive a million dollars. First, They have no clear picture in their minds of what a million dollars looks like, feels like, smells like, sounds like, and tastes like. And secondly, they are unconsciously clinging to limiting beliefs that prevent them from asking for what they desire and deserve. They simply do not believe there is any reason to ask for a million dollars since it's not going to magically appear. Now, I am going to reveal the hidden truth in your memory the thing inside of you that's going to blow you away and make it easier than ever to ask and receive a million dollars or anything else you desire and deserve. Are you ready for this? Do you need to go tinkle or something before I tell you? Maybe you need to stop the car and pay attention. Are you paying attention? The truth is you have already successfully asked for a million dollars and maybe more than once. You might be thinking, say what, Lori? I never asked anyone for a million dollars, and it certainly isn't showing up in my bank account as if by magic. Yet, as you think back and remember, how many times have you asked someone for a letter of recommendation to get you to the next step of your professional career? And how many times have they said yes and written you a letter? The truth is, if you have asked for and received a letter of recommendation, especially for medical school, residency, or beyond, then you have already asked someone to write your ticket for a million dollars minimum. And if that person you actually asked actually wrote you the letter and it assisted you in getting to the next step in your career, then you've successfully asked for a million dollars and it's on its way to you even now as we chat. You are receiving your million dollars. Whoa, that may have given you a rush like getting up too fast when your smartphone buzzes when you're on call. Think about that. Every letter of recommendation you ask for is your million-dollar ticket. Does that change your perception of how you might want to go about asking for that letter? Do you really want to treat it as a random event like buying a lottery ticket? Or do you want to treat it as a risk-free investment? Because however you choose to treat it affects your results. And guess what? Results don't lie. So here are five tips for how to ask for that letter of recommendation so that it always leads to the results you desire. Number one, choose the writer of that letter very carefully. Ask this question to yourself. Is this person capable of putting a million dollars in my bank account either by their position, influence, or current worth? Now it's time to play the game red light, green light. You remember this game, right? Uh, The person who's it turns their back to the players and calls, green light! And every player runs toward the person who's it until the person who's it calls red light and turns around and faces the players and opens her eyes. And then everybody stops. So you're going to play that game now. If you ask the question, is this person capable of putting a million dollars in my bank account, either by their position, influence, or current worth? And the answer is a holy moly yes. Then green light, 
go ask them for the letter. But if the answer is no, are you kidding me? Then red light, stop and find someone better qualified to write you a letter. Maybe the answer is, well, maybe. Then yellow light, proceed with caution. Make sure you have other letter writers who can pick up any slack in the weaknesses of this letter. So number two, when you have the green light, ask the person to write that letter with the confidence that reveals that you know what you're worth and with the humility that you know that you're asking them for a big commitment. If that person is the person that is the linchpin in helping you create what you desire, then their time is worth as least as much as yours and maybe more. Schedule an appointment in person with the individual and present yourself in your best light, congruent with the fact that you are asking them to write you a million dollar ticket and then ask the question this way. Dr. Severed, you probably get a lot of requests for letters of recommendation. And I'm also willing to bet that few of those who ask realize the value of a great letter carrying your signature. I mean, after all, when you write me a great letter and I get the position, then that's just like writing me a check for a million dollars. It opens doors for my career that very few can open. Do you know me well enough to write me a great letter of recommendation? If the answer is yes, then follow with, I've prepared a summary of what's important to the leaders in the department and what they expect in the position I seek. And on my CV, I've highlighted some facts that demonstrate that I have what they're looking for. Will you please help me communicate that I'm the right person for this position to them? Then provide those documents to the letter writer, both in written form and in electronic format from which they can easily cut and paste. So what if the answer's no? We talked about this in another show. Follow with something like, Hey, thanks for being honest with me. What suggestions do you have so that I gain the experience I need to be the type of person you would enthusiastically recommend? Or why do you think I'm not a good fit? Make sure you listen carefully to the answers because sometimes our own disappointment can get in the way of us hearing how we can really grow from the experience. So number three of our five steps here, our five tips. Number three, once you have the commitment from the letter writer, be clear and specific about the results you desire. If you don't know exactly what you want, then the person you ask to write the letter will be vague in what they communicate. So make sure you communicate all the specifics about the position to which you have applied and the deadline the writer needs to meet and any other special requirements about submitting the letter. Number four, ask the letter writer, what else might assist you in writing this letter? Listen carefully to the answer and help out as needed. It's your responsibility to make sure that that letter gets where it needs to be on time. So if you think the letter may be delayed or, or maybe even not get written, ask this question again later and be prepared to ask someone else if this person falls short of their commitment to you. Number five, finally ask, what's the best way to follow up with you to assure that the letter gets in the right hands at the right time? Then remind the letter writer of the approaching deadline in the manner they prefer. So just to recap, In this show, you've gotten an understanding that the lack of clear definition and holding on to limiting beliefs stops most people from attaining the money, influence, and time freedom they desire and deserve. You now know with certainty that you have already successfully asked someone to write you a million-dollar ticket, and your million dollars is on its way to you. So be on the alert and recognize it as it's coming in. Celebrate its arrival, even if it's coming in little bits over time. You now have a new appreciation of the value of a well-written letter of recommendation and five tips for always asking for and receiving what you desire. So there's just one thing left now for this show. Your next step. Number one, assign a monetary value to an hour of your time and calculate what a year's worth of your average working time is worth. Multiply that amount by four times or more and make that amount of money real to your mind using your five senses. Number two, review how many letters of recommendation you have received up to this point in your career path and calculate how much of your million dollars has already come to you. Number three, celebrate that success and send at least one thank you note to one of those mentors who wrote you a letter. Number four, build a list of people of influence and how each one might further your career. Number five, use the five tips when you next need a letter of recommendation. Number six, lighten up and have fun when you ask for that letter. Remember, a little humor and lightness goes a long way. And number seven, 
be sure to let me know how you're using these principles. Email me at lori at thedoctorsmentor.com. I'm Dr. Lori Barr, The Doctor's Mentor, reminding you that one idea is all it takes to change your world. There's more to explore at thedoctorsmentor.com. Are you stopping at a hospital? Hello? Don't you know that hospitals are one of the sickest places on the planet? Don't touch anything in there and get out as fast as you can. 